as I pulled into the parking lot again, I saw these big guys in the parking lot and I go inside of the atelier and I see more big guys and I look over and Beyonce's like, hi, I've been waiting for you. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I know. And it- I apologize. And she was amazing. And she stayed like another two hours and we just like ordered a bunch of clothes. <laughs> Great. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to The Tea with Mona Me. In today's episode, I got to chat with Mark Zanino and Brianna Ray Merlot of Mark Zanino. If you are a pop culture junkie like me, you will surely recognize Mark Zanino's name due to his star studded client list. I absolutely loved learning more about their exciting and always beautiful world in fashion, and I just know you will too. So let's get to it. Welcome, Mark and Brianna. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Excited. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourselves. Go ahead, Brianna. <laughs> well, my name is Brianna and I am Mark Sanino's bridal account executive. I've been working for you for about three and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And um, he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd you go? <laughs> she has to say. <laughs> I was ready to say that. <laughs> um, and my name is Mark Zanino, and I am a fashion designer, and I've been a fashion designer for many, many years, kind of all over the place, from bridal to Hollywood red carpet to music industry people to everything. Yeah. So I've kind of do it all from A to Z. Yes, definitely. So tell tell us how you came to be Mark Zanino. Huh. Um, well, I well I w- was studying architecture, so I was wanting to be an architect. Yes, so that's how that all started. Yes, and I went to school at Pepperdine in Malibu, so that's what pulled me to Southern California. Mm-hmm. And kind of big, long story short, through my series of classes, one had to be I had a series of illustration courses. One had to be fashion. I took one course. The year later. Um, that instructor said, somebody wants, is looking for an assistant. I want to recommend you. And it happened to be for Nolan Miller, who was a big Hollywood designer. Mm-hmm. And Aaron Spelling was a producer and on hit all these hit television shows. I ended up getting the job. So I thought I'll do this for a year. And literally it took my life away. I ended up partnering with Nolan and then taking over the company and just growing it. So, um, so I went from architecture to fashion and I've never looked back. Yeah. So that was your start was how you got initially into the fashion industry was through Nolan, through you Nolan said? Nolan Miller. But what, yes. what happened for me that now I am grateful at the time I never knew was mm-hmm. that at that time we were working for like Elizabeth Taylor, Sophia Loren, like all these iconic people, Yes, which allowed me to enter at that A-list level. Mm-hmm. Had I set out to do this on my own, it never would have happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. because by being at that level over time, as I partnered, took over the company, then, you know, then we, you know, you get Julia Roberts, you get Beyonce, you get Angelina Jolie, like everybody kept coming because we, I was already at that level. Yes. Which I never realized that at the time. I yes. really took that for granted. And that is the single key that sustained our company and, at, at the level that we continue to work at, it was by the grace of God. So, yes, yeah. that's amazing. Because I know when you Google, you Google Mark Zanino, and you see all of these, all of these, you know, celebrities and, yeah, and you it's know. Been, it's been, um, it's been amazing too. And I've, I learned a lot from Nolan about the good and the bad about it. So mm-hmm. that's why periodically I pump the brakes. So I will like be doing you know, film or television actresses, but then I stopped doing like, you know, music performers. So, because once you get labeled a costumer, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to wash that off. Yes. And even in bridal, then everybody's always like, oh, it's too flashy. It's too this, even if it's not, you Mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they affiliate it with, you know, so, you know, over time I jump in of doing like, you know, Jennifer Lopez and Mariah and Brittany and, and then I jump out. I'm yes. Doing it. Yes. So I, I do it sparingly enough to, you know, have the opportunity to do it. Yes. But um, not get labeled that. So, um, but that's also what's I think helped us work with brides because, to me, working with brides is so similar to working with the actresses. Really. The red carpet. 
I mean, it's practically identical because it's their big day. They need to look the best from every angle. Yes. You know, I mean, the world stops when they hit, you know, going down the aisle or they hit that red carpet. Yes. So, so it's, it's, a, it's pretty um, similar. So it's uh, been an easy transition. Yeah. To stay in the bridal. Wow. Okay. So where are you from originally? Are you from California originally? Yes. I'm originally from San Francisco. Oh, so, from the Bay. Yeah, which, is, which is like a whole nother state. Yes. <laughs> it's very conservative, very different. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's where I grew up. And so when I came down to Pepperdine, I didn't want to because my parents picked the school for me mm-hmm. because your parents pick it. I'm like, Ugh, I don't yes, go there. of course. And I got there and it's in Malibu. I'm like, okay, what's the catch? You know? Uh-huh. And um, I ended up loving it. That sounds it. terrible. I, I, know. <laughs> I, know. I know. I mean, you, know, you think, you know, what's wrong? Why are you sending me here? And I ended up loving it. So I went to school there for um, five years and then I lived in Malibu for eight years. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very, it's a very California way of living. 100%. And so that is what I really gelled with. So even though our clients are basically global, we, we work all over uh-huh. the world, but um, coming home to California, to LA, to the coastline is the most relaxing thing for me. It is so beautiful, especially in Malibu. That's like, yeah. it's so funny to me. You're like, Ugh, mom, dad, I like, know. I don't want to go to the beach to go to school. I, I was trying to go to the Midwest. <laughs> It's, it's so funny. And the funny thing is at Pepperdine, for every student, it's mandatory PE the first two years. You have to take stop. PE, which I'm like, this is like high school. But PE was like sailing, scuba diving, stop golf, you surfing. Know, like, yeah. Then it was horseback riding. You know, Western and English, and like, so no. you, you learn so much. And the first time my parents came to visit, they were like this is more like a country club than a school. And I'm like, well, you sent me here. (laughs) And, um, but it's also, it's a, it's a small school. It's a very affluent school. The Mm -hmm. student body is very global. Yes. So fashion is everything. Like the girls literally change three times a day. And wow. Which initially I thought was kind of silly, but then it was a big fashion competition and I was aware of it. So, I, my mom was really into fashion, and mm-hmm. I think that's where I, a lot of this first rubbed off. And mm-hmm. then when I went to Pepperdine, it solidified what I was doing. And then also when I started working for Nolan 100 years ago, there was a show called Dynasty, which was a big television show. Mm-hmm. And Pepperdine epitomized in the 80s that show Dynasty. So that's why I think I got ended up getting the job with Nolan and Aaron Spelling because I understood the aesthetic. I understood the look. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I started. Wow. So that architecture background, how did you finish with the architecture? Yeah, so I I have my degree. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I believe for anybody, you know, if if you're creative, design is design. It's all about proportion and balance. And so whether it's architecture, whether you're designing furniture, whether it's fashion, painting, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all the same concept. Mm -hmm. So that's why I I think for anybody, do not limit yourself by a description Mm -hmm. because you can blur those lines and it works. Because the one thing for me was when I was switching gears, my dad said, no, he said, we just paid for this education in architecture and you're not going to throw it away. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain, I'm not throwing it away. I'm just, you know, reformulating what it is that I've learned. Yes. And it actually made me so much more well-rounded. And then as I got into it, I realized, you know, iconic designers like, um, you know, like Giorgio Armani, like all of them started in architecture. They were all architects. first, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's, it gives you a different eye. So that's why with our clothes and especially with bridal, it's all about the construction working for me. Yes. And that's where I learned that because I mean, I get, you know, bigger girls that are like, I can't wear strapless. I want to, but I can't. I'm like, yes, you can. Yes. And it's all about the inner structure. And that's usually where, you know, a lot of designers don't start because they don't really think it's necessary. They don't understand. I mean, any girl, if you can reshape her body a little bit, Mm -hmm. the outside can be the simplest sheath. But Mm -hmm. when her body looks better, that's what she'll, that's where she wants to go that direction. Yes. And so that's why I'm like, you can really achieve a more simplistic look that is really, wow, just very understated by just reshaping the body a little bit. Yes. 
And so, and that's kind of the key to what we do. Yes. And, and you know, kind of going back to the Hollywood thing, we really are very somewhat subdued and toned down mm -hmm. compared to what people think, you know, we, our collection was going to be. <laughs> yes. It's much more understated. Yes. And it's really beautiful. And I think that's always one, one note that brides take away from it is they're like, oh my gosh, like this is the way that this is fitting the structure of this. Yeah. And it's, it's and you know, that's where like, because you know, the majority of what I'm known for, because it gets all the attention is death dressing celebrities on the mm -hmm. red carpet. Mm -hmm. But literally they have to have the confidence of knowing they're going to look good from every angle. Mm -hmm. Because if a photographer takes that one bad shot, that's the bad shot mm -hmm. that's going to be in every magazine. Mm -hmm. And then the actress wants to kill me. Yes. So that's why we have to make sure that you look good from every, you know, every angle all the way around. And the same thing with the bride. You walk down that aisle, the eyes are on you front, back, side. Exactly. <laughs> you know, continually photographs are being taken nonstop. So you have to know you look good. You have to worry about yes. it. Yes. And I feel like it can also like threaten the integrity of your design as well. Cause yeah. it's like, if you see somebody at the wrong angle, then you can be like, that's a terrible dress, but it's not even that. It's right. just that you, you miss the angle. Yeah. But if you're making sure that you're perfecting that look from all those angles, yeah. then, and, th and then it works out. And and there's always, you know, I mean, like, you know, when a girl puts on the right dress, it clicks. Mm -hmm. She knows mm -hmm. it. She just acts, reacts differently, acts differently, moves differently. She knows mm -hmm. I'm, I'm this, I'm in the zone now. I yes. Fabulous. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Okay. So what about you, Brianna? How did you get your start? Well, I actually started as a bridal consultant for Nordstrom a million years ago. And one day I decided to move to New York city, uh, without a job, without an apartment. My parents thought I was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and within a week, I got a job at a bridal salon and was on a little television show called Say Yes to the Dress, oh. where I met Mark Zanino. And I feel like the rest is history. You know, he uh, whisked me away back to California. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I would, would be, be doing trunk shows, and I, I was exclusive with Kleinfeld for a while, and um, I saw Brianna, and I'm like, oh my God, you're perfect to work for us, because she... she was different as a consultant, wasn't a typical consultant. She listened more. She was in tune with the bride. She understood what she went in what the bride wanted. And I'm like, yep. So we snatched her and dragged her back. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you know, darn it. You got, you had to come back here oh, to the beach. To beautiful California, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think in your opinion sets Mark apart from other designers after you've been working for him for a hmm. while. I know. I have to be careful not to say anything that might uh, make him very upset with me after this. Um, for me, I think what sets him apart is that he has this incredible ability to just evolve with whatever comes his way. So whether it's an exciting opportunity with a client or a crazy, terrible obstacle like this pandemic that we're all going through, um, you know, just to work alongside someone who has achieved so much success and, and has the amazing reputation that he does have. He comes into work every day with no ego, most days, <laughs> um, no ego and, and eagerness to collaborate with everybody and just kind of a fearlessness to try something new and I think it's it's pretty inspiring to be next to you and, and always see how much you're working on yourself uh, professionally and personally. Well, thanks. We have a good group of people that work <laughs> together. And and the one thing that I've learned how I became, you know, be become, became a designer, um, it's never about me. It's about mm -hmm. the person I'm working with. It's about the celebrity, the bride, the whoever. Mm -hmm. It's about them. Mm -hmm. And so you always need to remove your ego, your everything, because even if – we design a dress that we think is amazing. Mm -hmm. The client doesn't. Mm -hmm. Then the client doesn't. And yeah, yeah. You change it. You rip it apart. You do whatever you need to to make the client happy. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to, you know, check your ego at the door. And and then I also just learned that, you know, the progression of fashion never changes. It's always in motion. Always. Mm -hmm. And you have to be fluid and roll with it. And and it's a collaboration. So it's a collaboration with the client that we're working with. It's a collabor collaboration with the team members, you know, that we're working with. Everybody's involved. And so the first, it's funny because it, initially when someone's new and I'll say, you know, tell me your opinion. If you think something's ugly, tell me, Ooh, that's ugly. Mm -hmm. And, um, but initially everyone's afraid to say that because mm -hmm. they don't want to like get me upset. 
And then, like, and with Brianna, I'd be like, ooh, you know, isn't this beautiful? Do you like this? Uh-huh. But she doesn't say anything. And I'm like, <laughs> do you like? And she just smiles. Uh, and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I do not like that at all. So I'm like, okay. So, like, you know, what, what are we going to do to change it? I feel like I'm never afraid to tell him how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's, you've got to be able to check yourself. And, and um, but the things that turn out best are the things that evolve. You know, we, from the initial sketch, it may have an evolution where it turns into something completely else, but it's an amazing dress, gown, whatever mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And those are the things that are the most fun. And it makes everybody, in, you know, everybody in the team a part of the finished product. Yes. So everybody has the satisfaction of knowing they had their fingers in it. Yeah, which is definitely rewarding, I think. Yeah. That's the best part about working. And I can say, too, here, you know, it's a very similar feeling. It's not, obviously, a, it's not you know, designer, but like just the environment of like feeling like you get to be a part of it, you know, they're asking your opinion. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel valued, you know? And when you have a team that feels valued, I feel like that only just boosts your success because they want to go just as hard for you as you're going for them. You know, for any career, for anybody, the biggest gift talent you can have is to listen, Mm -hmm. which so many people can't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They don't listen. They don't hear. Like you don't hear what the client just said. Mm -hmm. Listen, Mm -hmm. you know, they're giving you all the cues of what you need to do. Yes. And, and so that's why I think we have a good, really good team together. It's also why we love you guys here. Thank (laughs) you so much. (laughs) Immediately felt like family. Right. I mean, everyone's just so relaxed and and just willing to do good work together to make make the best result for everyone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Okay. So what does your typical day look like? What are you, what are you doing day to day? Well, lately, <laughs> since this whole virus, um, we've really learned to be really flexible. We always were flexible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with us, we, we can get, you know, a call from, you know, Brianna will, Text me in the morning. I just got a call from a bride in Scotland, needs a dress immediately. This is what she wants, you know. And so we immediately, you know, send a measurement chart, have a fitter, take measurements there. Mm -hmm. You know, she won't be able to come here or she's only going to come here once for a fitting. Um, You know, all the way through, like, I mean, recently it was dealing with the the Emmys that just were virtual that mm-hmm. sort of, everybody stumbled through that, but it was like sending dresses out for that. But you know, it's new, it's a new form of, of production. So nobody really knows how it's going to turn out. So, so no two days are ever alike. And um, just knowing, you know, to be flexible, we have, we've had some people in our business uh, teammates that, can't switch gears like that. They are very, you know, checklist oriented. Don't disrupt my day. And we're like, it's not going to work here Mm -hmm. (laughs) because halfway through the day, something can turn your day upside down and you have to be able to roll with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. It's, it's such an uncertain times right now. And you really, you don't know how things are, are going to go. The virtual Emmys were crazy to me. I I was like, what is happening? I know. It was totally (laughs) different. I'm still like, not sure how I feel about it all. Uh Uh-huh. You know, and I was like, you know, okay. And I give them kudos for trying it in a completely unusual, different format. Mm -hmm. Um, However, with everything going on, I do think everyone is going to land in a better place. I think that we are learning to be the best that we can be. We're learning how to, you know, forge new paths and think outside the box. And, you know, the whole survival of the fittest is exciting. Mm-hmm. And it's, if you need to make a change, now's the time to do it. Yes. So you really have to get on the train or just wave goodbye. Mm-hmm. It gives people a chance to reset, I think, too. It gives yeah. people a chance to realign themselves with what they want to do, with their totally. goals, you know. And I think, too, it's starting to make people more compassionate. I think it's really pulled families together more. Mm -hmm. Um, I I see there's a a real good side to all of this. Mm -hmm. People are starting to appreciate their friendships more. Yeah. Um, I mean, even just as, you know, our team that works together, it really pulled the core group together. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we are in this with each other no matter what. Yes. And that was our first strength of like, okay, let's keep going. Let's change what we need to change. And, Move forward. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say are some of your biggest creative influences? You know, I 
it sounds so cliche, but I get influenced by everything. So it can be fabric. We look at fabric collections from around the world constantly. Mm -hmm. So that can inspire me. You know, colors like we, Brianna and I travel around, we can be in the airport and just watching people go back and forth, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's a good neckline on her for that type of body. This is a great, you know, look and how to incorporate that into whatever kind of design we are thinking of. Um, and then, and then our team, I mean, you know, we have little brainstorming periods mm -hmm. where everybody will kick around ideas or everyone's always tearing tear sheets out of magazines. You know, mm -hmm. I love this top, that bottom, or this dress was almost there. The designer missed the mark, you know, like whatever. Mm -hmm. And we discuss and come up with concepts all the time. And um, as a designer too, that's one of the things I've learned most was not to live inside my head. Mm -hmm to be a sponge and absorb everybody around me because I think it's a kiss of death when in my head, I only see how I think fashion should be. And, and I think it's a really isolated, scary place to work from. I think you have to really keep an open mind and st in order to stay truly creative. So, um, I have a good group of people that keep me in check. All the time. <laughs> Happy to be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm interested because hearing you say that about, you know, how you're, you're kind of your eyes there all the time. I have this this like theory kind of with creatives, you know, where I feel like they're honestly just a whole different kind of people. But I feel like when you're creative, your mind is always running, running, running. And I don't feel like you can train your mind to be like that. I feel like it's just something you have. Uh, you know, I do agree. And I, because I have friends that are not creative mm -hmm. and we are like oil and water. I mm -hmm. love them to death, but I mean, literally, I do not understand the way they think. Mm -hmm. They do not understand the way I think. Mm -hmm. And and it can get frustrating, but it is just the way it is. And, mm -hmm. you're, and, you're, and so that's where, too, like, I can see... You know, because we have an amazing internship program. So we have interns of all ages. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll find someone that is creative, mm -hmm. that um, is trying not to be, wants to be, or their, their family, their parents are pushing them to be more number crunching or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're just not. They're creative. And vice versa. You see people that so desperately want to be creative mm -hmm. and they just aren't. Yes. You know? And you just want to, you feel so bad. It's like me trying to play the piano. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? I took lessons. My sister was amazing. And my instructor told my mom, you are wasting your money on him. Yes. <laughs> Tell him to stop. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And, so, and I just, you know, so you just have to be able to call it. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where it differs is it's not, I think people get this idea that if you're not creative, like for some reason you're less than, you know, like yeah. you're not. And I don't think that is how it is at all, but I think that you can't force the creativity. Like, I feel like if you're going to be in a creative field, you truly have to just, your mind has to think that way. You have to be able to look at something and imagine how yeah. you would, you know, create something else out of yeah. it, you know, or, and, or you have to understand that and be able to, which is hard, but I believe it can happen is, um, you know, you, you, to train yourself to be creative in your way. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like, because I've talked to people that are, you know, like, you know, accountants, bookkeepers and stuff like, oh my God, I'm the, so the most uncreative person. But then I start talking with it and I'm like, you know, you're not because you can find a way how to get, you know, to Z that, you know, 90% of the other accountants couldn't see how to get there mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. is creative and then yes. once they realize you know i really am creative mm -hmm. the way i my approach to numbers and accounting or whatever so you know don't be too creative so you don't end up in jail but i mean <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you, know like, you, 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 you can be like even you know if you if you are a um mechanic working on engines or whatever you know like there is creativity to so many things it just depends on your approach definitely definitely so what is your process in creating your pieces what is start to finish how does that go i mean most however i get influenced most of it starts with sketching i sketch nonstop, nonstop. and for me because not every designer sketches but um I would die if I couldn't sketch. That's like the easiest way to express what's in my head on paper. And mm -hmm. then from there, it's a visual that everybody gets on the same page. They see it. So then we can start talking about it. Mm -hmm. Change this, you know, whatever. Drop that neckline, lower, you know, raise the collar, whatever. And we start doing things to it. But we're all working from visual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
because describing something, everyone's visual is different in their head. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it's trying to pull everybody onto the same page is my number one priority mm -hmm. in working on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even even a collection, like even we have you know every piece in a collection, but then when we when we merchandise and streamline the collection, mm -hmm. is really when you know everybody like we'll start there'll be dresses that I love mm -hmm. and half of everybody hates, <laughs> and then a dress that I'm like ooh we'll throw that thing out, and they're like everybody loves it, uh -huh. you know? and that's where I'm like okay let's try it let's see, but you know Brianna true. knows this happens all the time. That's true. I mean, I have to make sure that your collection is also very sellable. So, yes. yes. I mean, I love one of a kind artistic. Thing. I don't care if nobody ever buys it. I'm just like, ooh, it's pretty. You know? Just to look at, yeah. you know. And Brianna's like, it needs to sell. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> so, how long does it typically take you to to create a collection? I mean, as long as we have. So if we have four days, we can create a collection in four days. If we have four months, we'll create it in four months. Um, I mean, basically the pieces never stop. Like mm -hmm. we, we never stop creating mm -hmm. a collection. Mm -hmm. And so all we do is have a stopping point where we accumulate everything and put it into, you know, its title of whatever that collection is. But we, it's, it's an evolution that never stops. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that we may slow down and say, you know what, we're not going to, this, we're working on these eight gowns. We're not going to put those into this collection. We'll keep working on them for the next collection. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's really more of an inspiration, the things that we start connecting with and feeling passionate about. That's crazy. You can put things together that fast. Yeah. I saw, I was looking online. I was, um, doing my research about Mark Sanino <laughs> online, but I saw online whose dress you did, who Denise Richards, was it hers? You did in oh, 24 yeah. hours? Yeah. That's, oh my gosh. And, you know, and what was wonderful with that is she's so nice and easygoing. Uh-huh. And I've known her forever. And um, and then I and I know her husband, now husband, and they're so chill. Mm -hmm. They're such Malibu people. Mm -hmm. They're just <laughs> so relaxed that I'm like, we got this. Uh-huh. Because she is not a diva. Like she, no matter what, you know, even if, had I done it, I think had she not even really liked it, she'd have been like, okay, I'm wearing it. We're good. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, that's she, good. She's just super, super easy. So that's what made it fun. Um, what got me defensive about it was after we did it, because uh, she wanted to get on the back of his motorcycle, and that's how she was leaving the, after the ceremony and all that. Uh huh. So that's why we did a romper and the overskirt and whatever. Yes. Well, some people, you know, everybody has an opinion, so they wanted to chime in because of her age. I don't know how old is she. I think she's in her forties. So they were like, "Well, isn't she a little, you know, old to be having such a short?" skirt well it was shorts they were it was a romper and it's what she wanted so mm -hmm. and she looked amazing so good yes for i i line. saw that too i saw online that, that you were that they were like well mark's and you know snapping back at the yeah. haters i'm like good for him totally like, because i'm like it's not your dress exactly and then, then you, don't, you know buy one that is, that looks like exactly. your wedding exactly but it's hers and that's because that's one of my just you know idiosyncrasies with brides Get what you want. Mm -hmm. You listen to your mom or she may be paying for it or whatever, but it's your dress and mm -hmm. this is your body and it's your vision. And I don't think anybody should rain on that parade. No, not at all. I, I don't think that people really have the right to talk. If we're going to, I can see the room with the red carpets more so because that's just a whole, like that's a, a genre of television is critiquing red carpets, you yeah. know? But as, in terms of somebody's wedding, like who are you to tell somebody what they get married right. in? And, you know? and then who they are. Like that's my thing when I first meet a bride. I usually don't know them. So I'm like, you know, and they're like, you know, what do you see me in? Tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, are mm -hmm. you a chill beach person? Are you super formal cathedral? You know, like what is your dream wedding? Mm -hmm. you know, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. And then we start learning about them. Um, we may take it, you know, take a left turn and, and create something that they never even thought of that, that ends up being perfect. Or a lot of the girls, I think, um, have a vision of what they want. Yeah. And, and usually don't stray. And those are the girls that I, I think I really like working with too, because they are very headstrong. They're, they, they're secure. Mm -hmm. And definitely I think our brides have to be secure because we are a little bit, we're not so mainstream where, you know, 
kind of more fashion forward. We're a little more unique. Mm -hmm. And that's where it takes a bride that's confident. Mm -hmm. She knows what she wants. She's not listening to 18 of her friends Mm -hmm. design her dress by committee. Mm -hmm. She knows. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say your favorite piece that you've done? so far in your career do you have one (laughs) you're like all of them you know i mean i really don't because it's always changing for me Mm -hmm. and um you know there are some brides that we've done that i thought "Eh, the dress is okay whatever but then i see the photographs of their wedding and 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 i realize that you know we nailed it to what she had the vision she had in her head and 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 when it comes through their their energy and just their happiness, and I mean, it just makes, you know, photographs leap off the page, them leap off the page when you see it. Mm-hmm. And so that's where, you know, there are brides that I'll not even remember. And I'll say to Brianna, oh, my God, look at her. And she would think that's our bride from whatever. But I'm like, I don't remember looking like this. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, no, she wasn't all pulled together, but look. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, they're staggering. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. I always have to remind you who people are. <laughs> um, I mean, I see so many people that it's, yeah, yeah, you know, I do recognize, I no, must yeah. know them. Yeah, you but, definitely recognize faces. Yeah, I'm good. horrible with names. <laughs> it's I'll hard. to, hey, hey, you, hey, you know, I don't even know my name either. It's okay. <laughs> it's hard. Oh, it's, no. there's so much, there's, there's so much, you know, I feel like honestly, it's, sometimes it's better if you just, you can see somebody's face and you're like, I do know you. Yeah, like, I am yeah. so sorry, but I do yeah. know you, you know, but it is crazy how brides, you see them in the store and you're like, oh my gosh, you look so great in this. And then you see them on your wedding day, you're like, oh my gosh, you look so great in this. You yeah. know, it's, it's a complete flip. Yeah. It's really fun to see. It is. That, yeah. I, I love that process. Yeah. Too. I think it's really exciting. Yeah. And I love to see when their fiance, just like whatever, ear to ear grin, or they start Oh, crying, I know. Like, oh, that's fantastic. That always sends me. I love that. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's love. love. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the first piece that you created? Like that you ever, you went through the whole process well, with? Well, the, the, the first notable thing that I think I ever did that actually had my name on it. I was working with Nolan. It's, it's how my label got created. Mm-hmm. Um, things were progressing and I designed a collection that Nolan hated really hated it. And so I'm like, but I believe in it. And he's like, no, my name will not go on this. And he said, you believe in it. You put your name on it. So I did. So I designed a more conservative collection for him. And then I had my collection and Sophia Loren came in, she flew in. It was for the um, Oscars. And, and so we had the two racks of clothes and, uh, you know, Nolan said, just let her walk in and see which rack she goes to. And so she went over to my new rack and picked out a dress. And it was a dress that was, um, it just had a one sheer layer of chiffon. So you could see her legs, everything through it. And it had a, a lace over nude mini skirt, little strapless mini dress underneath. Mm-hmm. But it was just the beginning of sheer things being sheer like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Nolan was just like, he, Sophia said, this is what I'm going to wear. And, and and Nolan said, you can see your legs right through it. It's like, you know, you didn't put a slip on. And she was like, what's wrong with my legs? And then also being European, mm-hmm. she's used to pushing the envelope. And her body looked amazing. Mm-hmm. And so she wore that dress. And, and you know, never kept saying, who are you wearing? And she would say, Mark Zanino. Because Nolan said, do not mention my name. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, you know. Tell them my name. And so that's really what launched my label way back when. And Sophia was the first one. Wow. That's so cool that he let you do that too. I know looking back on it, but that's also like with, you know, everybody, all my young staff of amazing people too. like you, there's room for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, And as you get older, you need to make sure you're not stuck. And the good thing is I've, have a lifetime of experience of what's worked and what's not. Mm-hmm. I know where to relax and let things kind of form on their own. And then I know also when to pull things back mm-hmm. because I've gotten in trouble by letting things go too, too far, too fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's where, um, with the team we have, it's really exciting, especially right now with, with, you know, the economy and the virus and everything that's happening. These are, new times and we're baking all kinds of new ideas and you know half aren't going to work half are so let's see because it's it is exciting we're trying all kinds of new stuff yeah great okay so what 
in terms of your brides, how do you want them to feel when they're in your gowns? I mean, I, I seriously, you know, just confident and beautiful. And mm -hmm. it, you know, it kind of sounds hokey, but a girl will put on a dress and even if I look okay, but you know, she still has an area on her body that she doesn't think is accentuated properly or she feels insecure. And I think when a girl puts on, you know, a dress and actually is like, oh my God, I look good. Like, mm -hmm. I really look good. And you see that that's the most rewarding thing is, is mm -hmm. confidence. Yes, 100%. Because it's, I think without the confidence, that's like too, like I can put somebody, we can put someone in a dress that we think is amazing and they can get a ton of compliment, compliments, but if they don't feel like them in that dress, mm -hmm. it's going to be awkward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to feel, this is me. Yes. You know, this, is, this is who I am. Yes. And I feel like you can't stress that enough. Like truly when a bride feels good, they look good. Yeah. so good yeah. like it just, it just clicks it doesn't matter if people don't like the dress like when your your happiness really does shine through and it sounds kind of cheesy and corny it's so true, it's so true. and yeah. you think like day to day in your life you know you put on just a regular outfit you're gonna go to dinner you put on a regular outfit you know and you you're doing whatever and you're getting ready if you feel like eh, yeah. the whole night you're like Ugh, i'm not totally. having a good it's time so and you know like we joke all the time because you know, I live in t-shirt and jeans and whatever, mm -hmm. but I have certain t-shirts that I feel better. Uh -huh. The sleeve's a little tighter, you know, it mm -hmm. hugs your chest a little more. It's a little looser around my belly. It's, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, I just feel better in certain pair of jeans and a certain t-shirt. So we all have those items in mm -hmm. our wardrobe that we know we feel good in it. Yes. And, um, and, and that's, you know, I think that's the key to everybody and, and when you're you know creating your wardrobe you know focus on the on pieces that you feel good in and, yes um you can build a really nice tight good looking wardrobe that way and develop your own sense of style yeah definitely so kind of on that note what are some pieces that you guys wear day to day that you have to have I have to wear high heels. <laughs> I live in my heels yes. and when I drive I take one shoe off and keep the other one on just so I'm ready to pop out of the car or whatever. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. And you'll never, she, if she has no shoes on, she'll walk on her toes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, She's committed. Anyone, yeah. <laughs> she loves high heels. Loves wow. High heels. What about you? I don't like high heels. Hard to walk, but, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not my preferred yeah, choice. <laughs> uh, um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm t shirt and jeans, and I'm super relaxed always. Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is, even like when we have black tie events, whatever, you know, I'll step it up a little, but I'm still, you know, dressed down to most because like I tell everybody, no one's there to see me. They're there to see everyone else that we made clothes for. Mm -hmm. And and I like that. I don't like... <laughs> I don't think I like a bunch of attention. Yeah, I, I'm don't. not, yeah, I'm not a look at me kind of person. Mm -hmm. I'm a, hey, look at them. Yeah. <laughs> look what we did for them, you know? Yeah. Um, I actually think too, that is why I've done what I've done for so long mm -hmm. because I really, my happiness comes from making other people happy. Mm hmm. So, that's, yeah. And you, Brianna's that way too. Yeah, I am. That's where we get along. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I mean that's how you know you're in the right spot too you yeah. know it's not it's not ever the me show when you're when you're doing what you love mm -hmm. you know yeah so the time flies by it does let me tell you <laughs> so we're gonna do like some fun questions but before we get into some fun I mean all the questions are fun <laughs> but we're gonna do like a like a little round of questions that we ask we ask all of the guests um but before we get into that I want to talk about career highlights what are some career highlights for you where you were like this is so cool go ahead no I think yeah. it's more I mean it's you know like you know, I, I, there have been clients or girls that just don't feel good about themselves mm -hmm. and whether it's their weight, whether it's whatever. And they literally, you know, some girls are like, mm, I'm getting married, but I wanted to lose, you know, 200 pounds and I just wasn't <laughs> able to. And, and I'm like, so you, you, you know, you, you reaffirm that they are beautiful. You're going to be beautiful. And, mm -hmm. and so there are three clients that we completely turned around, mm -hmm. which they're, they we created a happiness in them that is the most you know just t 
intoxicating feeling ever because here's somebody that basically almost had a crushed spirit mm-hmm. and you made them just soar and feel amazing. So that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Celebrity wise, like I'm always amazed where like we had just moved into a new atelier and the doorbell rang the day that we had movers moving and it was Julia Roberts and I hadn't dressed her before. Stop. And she was like, I'm like, hey, and she's like, hey, and <laughs> she's like, can I, I need a dress made because I'm, she was shooting the L'Oreal commercial and it had to be couture and she hated the, what the, the dresses they had made, mm-hmm. but she said, we're shooting. So I'd like, you need to make me some dresses by tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. And, and it just happened and she was so sweet and it, you know, so those spontaneous things like that, um, always kind of thrill me. And we had one day, um, I had all, you know, mannequins in the win- windows. We probably primarily do women's clothing. And I saw all these huge guys come into the back door because um, we have no, usually we never have a front entrance. We mm-hmm. always private entrance in mm-hmm. the back. Mm-hmm. And there are all these big guys. So I thought, oh my God, because I work a lot with Mindy Weiss, who's an event planner. Mm-hmm. And Mindy, I do a lot of NBA, NFL people through her. Mm-hmm. So I thought this must be one of Mindy's group because it's all these like basketball players or something. Uh-huh. Well, it was all um, security and I looked down, and it was for Prince. And <gasps> Prince is like, hey, there's a suit in the window. And I'm like, okay, but these are all women's clothes. And he looked at me, and he's like, I don't care. And so I was like, <laughs> okay. And then we're running around, bumping into each other. Prince is here. Prince is here. You know. <laughs> oh, and my so, God. You know, stuff like that. And, and there was a Beyonce story, too, how Beyonce came to me. It was a fluke. And I didn't believe everybody, so I didn't oh come into work in the morning. Oh, my goodness. And I left her sitting there by herself for two hours. <gasps> And I came back. She waited. She waited. Because I thought they were lying to me. Because I had just well, was in New York and I did an interview and they said, who, haven't you dressed that you want to? I'm like, oh, Beyonce. And the next day I'm back in LA and they're like, Beyonce's here. And I'm like, shut up. You know, everyone's going <laughs> to tease me now forever. And I didn't go. As I pulled into the parking lot again, I saw these big guys in the parking lot and I go inside of the atelier and I see more big guys and I look over and Beyonce's like, hi, I've been waiting for you. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I know. And it- I apologize. And she was amazing. And she stayed like another two hours and we just like, ordered a bunch of clothes and i'm like oh my god wow amazing so that was the introduction to her that was fabulous so those things are always like blow my mind i cannot believe you made beyonce wait (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh i mean but that's amazing that just like just (laughs) just pulling into work you're just like another day you know seriously so you know when you're saying like there are no two days are ever alike for us wow so and again just be flexible roll with it but brianna's been amazing at at being flexible continually i mean and basically she literally works 24 7 Yes, I do. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I call and I know she must be like, what the hell is he calling? Hey, hey, I'm like at night he's like, I had a thought. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. Okay, cool. So let's get into these these little questions. So both of you, I'm curious to curious to hear your answers to these. So the first one is if you had an autobiography, what would you title it and why? Go ahead, you yeah. first. I had an autobiography. It would be called How to Be Practical and Fabulous at the Same Time. Uh-huh. <laughs> she never lets go of fabulous. No, no. I emphasize fabulous, but I always learn to think logically with yeah. everything that I do. Yeah, that is totally true. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. She's the part of my brain that I don't have. So. <laughs> well, we know she's always doing fabulous if she's always in heels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And literally, for me, it would probably be crapshoot because I fly right in the seat of my pants and just see what sticks to the wall all over. And if somebody tells me no, like you can't do that or it's never been done, then I will do it that way. Mm-hmm. I will make sure that it works. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that's funny okay so this one uh what are three things you can't live without oh my goodness um no you go first i have to think about this. well i already know two of your things uh, what are, so. okay you tell me what you've uh, observed about your me. high heels yes your eyelashes yes and hairspray <laughs> <laughs> And she's good. After that, she's I'm good. good. I'm ready for the yeah. day. Perfect. She can make an outfit out of a 
pillowcase and a you know piece of rope, belt it, whatever. Yeah. But um, as long as my hair looks good, we're fine. <laughs> so we're finding Brianna on an island with high heels, hairspray, and eyelashes. Yep. She'll be set. <laughs> And, and so the question is, what about the three things? Three things you can't live without. Well, this is really corny, but Truman, my dog. <laughs> yes. My entire life. Uh huh. And um, and being at a convertible, being in the car, top down with my dog driving, uh-huh. fixes anything. Uh huh. Anything. And um. And me. <laughs> and, 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 and as long as Brianna is a phone call away, I'm good. So those are my three things. Brianna Truman uh-huh. and your convertible. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a cute answer! Thank you for saying that, even though I fed you that answer. <laughs> because even with her false eyelashes and her hairspray, she always insists on the top being down. Yeah, I love it. And to wow. to my dog, when he gets in the car, the first thing he does is paw to take the top down. Oh my he gosh! Hates the top hates it. Oh my yeah. gosh! How <laughs> cute! Snow and all. We'll be driving up the mountains. It'll start snowing. That top's got to be up down. Wow, that's so cute. Okay, um, so this one is: What is your advice to current and future brides? Try everything on, and just be patient during this crazy time we have, because sooner or later it will all be uh, a new normal, and we can all go on living in a new beautiful way. Yeah, that's good. Um, I mean, I think. You know, just enter whatever with an open mind. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of like when you were Brianna, saying about try everything on, so many times, like, again, people telling me no when a bride says, oh, I can't wear that. Mm-hmm. You can. You just haven't. So no one has shown you how to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and 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 so that's where I, um, I'm, oh, you know, always try everything on. Some mm-hmm. girls think, oh, I have to wear a ball gown. I have big hips, right? Have whatever. No, you don't. And when you can convince those girls that you can be all snug in a nice little, you know, fitted gown, mm-hmm. they're like, oh my God, look at my body. So, yeah, I think, I think the most important thing for every bride is to try everything on, every silhouette, every different style. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great answers, guys. <laughs> So before we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to tell all of our brides about? Anything you've going on? Yeah. Yes. Well, we just launched an online uh, shop, MarkDeninoShop.com. Yes. Uh, we have our fabulous designer and luxury masks going on. Love that. But Mark recently designed a fabulous loungewear collection. So we'll be rolling out some fabulously affordable robes uh, oh. hopefully within the next month or so. And we're very excited to uh, bring Mark Sonino to the everyday consumer. Yeah. So wow. They're going to be affordable. And the amazing thing is that we're doing for a little inside that'll probably get kicked by Brianna, but um, <laughs> the amazing thing with a lot of these, we have such vast inventory of fabrics uh-huh. that we're like these kimonos we're making and they're going to retail for what? Um, approximately between a hundred and $300. Okay. And in some of them, the fabrics that we're using are like $800 a yard. Oh. So for that price, you're getting something phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Because wow. We've had, we have so much inventory. Yes. So I said like, let's, just get rid of it yeah. and let's let everybody have a little bit of luxury that they normally couldn't. Oh. So I'm really excited about this. That I mean, sounds they're, you're awesome. Gonna, and these are like, you know, kimonos that you could either, you know, wear in the morning when you're having coffee or you could wear to yoga class or you could wear it with jeans and a tank or, mm-hmm. you know, dress it up, dress it down, just have fun. Um, but the fabrics are amazing. And that's what we got the actually, we actually had the um, inspiration from the mask because we were using all our high end luxury fabrics for the masks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, Oh my God, like this yes. fabric is amazing. And so now we're able to put it into something that they can actually wear on their body. So that's really so exciting. So you said that's in a month. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in about a month. Oh, okay. Just in time for the holiday season. Yes. Wink, wink. So yes. everybody can put that on their, their wish yes. list. Exactly. Yes. And then, of course, you will be here. This is airing on Friday the 24th, 23rd? 24th, 25th. I know dates. <laughs> so you will be here that this weekend. Yeah. Yes. With your collection. 
Yeah. Exciting. And we're really excited about that because we love everybody here. Yes. And everyone just has a good time. So mm-hmm. come on down, try some dresses on. Yes. And let's all have a good little party. Yes. We're super excited. The dresses are beautiful and really about the construction, especially any bride that's looking for good construction and a dress. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. You have to just put on yeah. a Marks and Eno. I mean, fit is everything. Yes. You know, that's the thing. Truly, things have to fit properly. And we're here to help you with it. So. Yes. Yay. Okay. Well, thank Thank you guys so much. It was super fun chatting with you guys. So, okay. Okay. We're all done. (laughs) Great.